Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Warfare Ecology. Listen, it is Thursday, so go ahead and do what that last slide said. Like and share and tell a friend that Warfare Ecology is on the air. Today is going to be a phenomenal day. We have got some uh, sons and daughters that will be joining us today on this, this uh, Deliverance Thursday. I don't know how this is going to go. But so, of course, you know, Overseer King is here. Bishop Blimmer will be here. And uh, we have uh, you will actually get to see some of our readers who have been hiding behind the scenes for these last three years. They will be seen in the public today. So uh, Tawanda Ely will be, with, be on with us and Cynthia Tolls. We have Pamela Farr. She's joining us. She's also a, a daughter of the ministry. And uh, Valerie Morrow should be here as well. So we have a whole cast for you today. So the conversation is going to be very, very interesting. So let's see how the Holy Spirit is going to move to release what God needs to share with us today. So you let this be your evangelistic tool and go ahead and share this. Share it to at least three people three people. Just put it out there and let it be seen so that we can see what the Lord has to say today. So, you know, we're on our schedule. We are on 4.30 Tuesday through Thursday for Warfare Ecology. And so thank you for tuning in and uh, we're going to see what the Lord has to say today. And so go ahead and like and share and tell a friend that Warfare Ecology is on the air. And as you know, we are progressing throughout the day. If you end up having questions for anybody on the panel or you have a question in general, you can always put that in the chat or you can email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. Okay, so we look forward to seeing what the Lord has to say today. Now, listen, we've been doing a whole lot of talking these last couple of years just in reference to, you know, entrepreneurship and building our war chest. And, you know, of course, we do know that war chest is more than just about money. It is also about having resources as well, too. But this week, we're going to be talking about having your income streams. And when you start to build those, the things that you need to keep in mind as you begin to build your income streams, because you want to make sure that you have a, a variety. You want passive and active streams of income. You know, those passive streams are the ones that whenever you are, it allows you to make money while you're sleeping. That's what it comes down to. So let's talk about it. Passive income is income that requires minimal labor to earn and maintain. That is what, you know, you got, of course, you got to do a little bit of effort to set it up and get yourself set up for success with that. And, you know, and some examples of that are like rental properties, investments, stocks, bonds, and et cetera, high yield savings accounts. And, you know, and I probably should add a couple more to there because even if you, you know, you wrote a book, you put it on your website, you make money from it, you know, while you're sleeping, you, you make a course, you make money from it while you're sleeping. You know, you just set yourself up for success. Those are the types of things that we want to do because you, when you have that passive income, it gives you something that'll make a little bit of money while you're not even really thinking about it. And then you come and you check your stuff. You're like, oh my gosh, I made some money. That's what that comes down to. And then to also have active streams of income. Now, active income is income that is uh, received from like a job or a business venture that you actively participated in. That is something that you pretty much have to do on the regular. You're like every day you got to get up and do something for this thing to make it work. So, you know, those comes down to like your wages and your salaries, you know, your tips and commissions and like your net business earnings. All of those are considered active income. So it's just a matter of like what you go to work for every day, the things that you do to put the put the food on your table. That's what that active income is. And so the thing is, is that as we begin to move forward into establishing our streams of income, maybe starting something new in 2023. Make sure that you look and see that you can not have everything being active, but have something that is passive so that you don't run yourself in the ground trying to make money. Okay. That's what it comes down to. And so as we begin to move into the new year, we want to make sure that we just finish what we started. Ecclesiastes 7 and 8 says from the New Living Translation, finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. So with that being said, everything that you set out to do that you start, make sure you finish it because you never know 
if it's going to be successful unless you finish it and see where you started you know for you know just to finish where you need to go that's what it comes down to so i encourage you to keep taking that self inventory and keep looking within yourself and seeing what it is that you have to offer because when it comes to those uh, inventory inventory strings income strings that self inventory is the best place to start because it allows you to deal with you and then allows you to see what you can do because you start listing all of your skill sets and the things that you know how to do. That self inventory will help you to actually get a stream of income that will probably allow you to start a business with little or no money out of pocket so that you can move forward. Okay. And so those are just based upon the things that are already on the inside of you. So get your new streams of income up, start a new business venture in the new year, and whatever you start, finish. Okay. So today is going to be a great day. Go ahead and get those questions ready. Put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. And while you're doing that, go ahead and send us your testimony. Tell us how the Lord has been moving on your behalf. I know, and you know that God is up to something. Listen, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So let their fingers do the clicking and let it serve as that elimination of the process blessing for someone else. Okay. All right. And then, so we are preparing because come this Sunday, December the 18th, immediately following service on Sunday, we will be celebrating Overseer Ronnie King's birthday at Bethel Family Worship Center at 515 Dowd Street in Durham, North Carolina. So we would love to see you there. And if you've never joined us for a Sunday service, come join us for Sunday service and then stay for Overseer King's celebration. He'd love to see you and be able to put a face with some of these people on Warfare College if you haven't already seen us. All right, so now listen, Bishop Bloomer has a Patreon. So he has master classes with the General of Spiritual Warfare. And so you can always take your phone or another device and scan that QR code that's on the screen, or you can do it the old fashioned way and go to www.patreon, that's P A T R E O N dot com backslash backslash spiritual authority and make sure that you sign up so that you can be in the mix of all these listen it's going to be some teaching that is going on and we've already got some things started so prepare yourself it is going to be um amazing I encourage you. And so make sure that you go back and check it. If you've already been on Patreon, there's some things that are posted and you might want to go hear those lessons that he put up last night. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I think somebody said something about uh, uh, sleep and dreams. You really need to go check it out. It's going to be some good hearted teaching. And plus it is on Patreon. So we do not have to worry about being censored. Listen, you do not want to miss it. So make sure you go ahead and join Bishop Bloomer's Patreon. So prepare yourself for today. It's going to be a great day. Go ahead and get those questions ready. Put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. Overseer King, how you doing over there? Great. How about you? Uh, it's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday, isn't it? You hear it? <laughs> What'd you say? You hear it? Yes. What does it sound like? Is that is that a phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's what's happening there? Explain to me what's going on right now. Well, somebody who probably should know that you are on Warfare Ecology every day, Tuesday through Thursday, is calling your phone. But that's probably not what you're it's, it's not going to start ringing unless I answer it or unless I I, I um I cut it off, right? Yeah, or decline the call. Yeah, come on. I see where you're going. Come on. Yes, you absolutely right. You ain't you got but one or two choices, and that's the answer or decline. But uh huh. Go ahead. But, but just because you didn't answer the call when it rained, don't mean it won't call back. Don't mean it won't keep trying. And so what? So. So, so what? And so you would think at some point somebody would just get irritated and just answer and say, what do you want? Now, what if somebody else grabbed the phone and answered it for me? And if the phone call was for me? Well, I would hope that they would know how to give you the, to either, uh, to, to pass the call over to you 
or to uh, take a message. And then but you get what, a message. I understand that, but why did they take the call personally for them, but the call was for me? Well, the, then the question becomes is why would they do something like that when they may not be able to equip to handle what it is that they're trying to answer? But they just get tired of hearing the call. They take it, take it, take it upon themselves to go do the task. And the call was for me. So you got a person that's answering the call that's not for them. Yep. And, and a call that's not for them and a call that they're not qualified to handle. Absolutely. And so, and I think that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. that, that people, <laughs> you set me up. That people will answer a call and then not even really know what they're truly getting themselves into. Just because they see or, or what somebody else did, you know, like, oh, well, they did it. It ain't no problem. I can do it for them. It's no problem. But, you know, you just don't have the right equipment to do so. And I'm going to need you to stop that phone from ringing because it's really getting, you know, it's like we got to do something about this. And, and isn't that what happened in real life? Absolutely. All the time. All the time. It happens. And then somebody just is they'd be like, you ain't going to answer the phone. You're not going to answer. But see, somebody could be sitting there watching your phone ringing and knowing that somebody is calling you and mm -hmm. telling you that you need to go ahead and answer it. And mm -hmm. you choose not to. So you got other people telling you your phone is ringing. You're being called. But you choose not to answer it yourself. And why is that? So why, why would you ignore a call that keeps coming in to you repeatedly and then other people got to start telling you that you have been called, you, someone's been calling you and you're not answering. So you then what preached, does that mean? You just preached the whole message. And see, when I, there is a, a the caller ID on it. So I see the call. It says God is calling you, but I'm not ready to answer that call right now. You see what I'm saying? It, uh, I said, well, nah, this is, uh, you know, God is calling me. It's going to be something, first of all, it's going to be something that I probably don't want to do. It's going to be, he's going to be asking me to sacrifice something I don't want to sacrifice. He wants me to give time. I don't want to give it to him. He wants me to give my life to him. I don't want to give it to him. And so I'm not going to answer that call because I'm too busy uh, living my best life now. You understand the phone okay. still. But do you know what? After a while, look, let me tell you this. After a while, the phone stops ringing. <laughs> it was a bill collector. <laughs> Oh, you're going to come home and something's going to, you're going to be locked out of your house. You understand? So the easiest thing to do is to do what? It's to answer the call. No matter, no matter what it is that's on the other side, just answer the call. Okay. Now I answered the call. I've got the instructions. I'm excited about the instructions, but I never carry on the instructions. So you then know, we, Get a call, okay, we get excited. You know, God spoke to me last night or he showed me a vision. I hear people, they're excited. God spoke to me. He gave me a vision. Oh, I saw a green tree and it seemed like the glory was coming out of the tree. And 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 I heard the Lord say, go. And we just get excited and we just all spiritual. Okay, and 10 years later, you still have a, <laughs> you know. But, you, but see, that's the thing. You know, a lot of the times, I <laughs> You know, we we have learned a lot about getting a word from the Lord these past three years we've been on Warfare Ecology. And I think, you know, sometimes we end up responding to stuff like that because we are still, let's be honest, babes in Christ. Uh -huh. And so we get excited. Oh, the Lord has called me to do this and do that. And then, but 10 years later, we still haven't done it because once we venture out and start trying to do it, we realize it's a whole lot more to it than what we thought. And it's easy to get excited, but it's harder to walk it through. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. You see, that's, see, that's, that's what's going to happen on New Year's Eve. <laughs> You're going to get a word. And you see how you went through all that? You understand? From beginning to end, you didn't pause. And, I mean, and it's, you didn't know I was going to do this. Uh, you know? No. Mm -mm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If I'm 30 <laughs> years old and get a call at 30 years old or 30 years old, Okay, 30 years old. Okay, but now I don't decide to pick up the phone until I'm 60 years old. And now you're going in, you, you need to answer the call that you should have answered. Now, the strength that you had when you was at 30, you know, even now you're at 60, you can answer, but you don't even have to understand this is a different, this is a different age, a different time. 
I mean, talk to us about that a little bit. I I I ain't got no comment. That, that that that's a whole nother ball game because mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of people who are like that though, you know. And even even though they may have answered the call when they um, you know, when they were younger, mm-hmm. but they didn't didn't find the need to actually respond mm-hmm. to that call and to do what it is they were supposed to do until they got older. And so now you can't identify, you don't have the strength, you don't have the gumption, the fortitude and stuff like that to do what you truly need to do. So then at the end of the day, now you're in trouble because you will be held accountable for what it is that you did or what was given to you. So now what? Yeah. So even though you decided, okay, well, you know what? Uh, The Lord had called me when I was 30, but I'm 60 now and I'm ready to preach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So it's all about what it is that we do, because during those course of the years, you know, of course, everybody has decisions. You know, we we all can make the decisions and we have choice, you know, free will, as they say, Mm -hmm. on what it is that we're going to do. But, you know, sometimes people are in positions and waiting on somebody else to get to where they're supposed to do be so that we can all move forward because every part supplies the whole. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. And I think that sometimes people, and then this is my opinion now, you know me and my opinions. I think sometimes people will, will procrastinate on some of the things that the Lord has told them to do. He might tell you, you are this, and then they don't move on it and they sit and they wait because to, to move on it is uncomfortable because it's easy to stay in a place and be comfortable. Yeah. I'm called. I might preach a little bit here and there, but the Lord said, go forth and pastor. Uh He tells you that, but then you don't move to pastor or don't move in any kind of capacity. And it's like, but you know, but I'm, I'm still doing the work of the Lord. No, you didn't do what he told you to do because you were comfortable in where you were. But the thing is, is that a lot of the times I think that, you know, we are in situations like that where the people that are connected to us, they have to, we have to move so that they can move too. So they can move too. You know. Wow. Now what happens when you get a call and they're static on the line and it seems like the call is not clear. Do you think a lot of people uh, they're, they're not clear with their call. You know, maybe God is speaking, but because on their end, there's so much um, clutter or whatever that God is speaking clearly, but because of what's going on in our life and in our mind that we get well, wrong. Well, I think that whenever you hear like a lot of confusion and clutter and stuff like that, mm-hmm. God is not the author of confusion. Mm-hmm. So knowing that, you know, he don't operate like that. Yeah, he might he might speak in a few riddles and fables and tables, whatever you want to call them. But as far as confusion, he don't do that. So right. when something like that is happening, that means that there's other things that are at play. Mm-hmm. That means that there's some kind of, uh, since it is delivered Thursday, some kind of demonic force or spirit or something that's coming up against it. And so a lot of the times when we find ourselves going through stuff. And stuff, it seems like it's out of place and it's like it's confusing and stuff that we really, really need to take a moment and actually step back and say, hey, what's really going on here? Mm -hmm. Because that right there that's meant to distract you is a distraction to keep you from tapping into your destiny and fulfilling your purpose. All right now. Okay, next. Let's talk about people say, um, well, when God called you, it wasn't a conference call. Let let, let me me reiterate that. Uh, Let's say God called you. And then, you know, you have the prophetic people around you that hear it also, you understand? And, and then they'll come and they'll confirm it because when he spoke it, they heard it in the spirit and you hear it and, and they're able to confirm it. And that, I think that's, that's a great thing right there, you, you know, yeah. because it's good, to have, it's good to have confirmation. People say, well, no, what's the conference call? Yeah, I understand that. But people, your spiritual leader hears the call, you understand? Right. And, and your midwives. God appointed midwives hear the call, and they may not say anything because it may not be their authority to say anything, but they're praying and they're interceding that you answer that call and be corrected, but your spiritual leader heard the call too. Now, you know what I'm saying? So, so after my two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So you know I'm getting ready to throw a monkey wrench in what you're saying. So okay. at the same time, though, so what if you say you are, you heard God called you 
and your midwife is, you know, not saying God called you, but your midwife is listening while you were sitting here trying to birth this thing. But then what you think you're trying to birth is not really what, what God called you to do because mm-hmm. your, your spiritual leader says something different. How does that work out? Or your spiritual leader doesn't even recognize it. How does that work out? The call that God is really calling you, your spiritual leader doesn't recognize you? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a question we need to put on the floor. <laughs> because, go ahead. I mean, I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, I've heard people say it before. We've, we've seen people come up in the chat, say people have sent questions in on warfare ecology, talking about that as well, too, that, you know, I feel like I'm called to do this, but my spiritual leader doesn't, um, mm-hmm. you know, doesn't, doesn't believe. Like, just say if you're in the church and you get a call, your spiritual leader doesn't even believe in women preachers or women. Absolutely. Whatever. What do you do in a situation like that? God, now God knowing he was going to call you, God knowing that you was in that place. So why does he put you in a predicament like that and call you in a situation? Is it something that God wants you to learn in that situation? Absolutely. Because just because you are in a place that they may not believe that maybe you're in that place because you're the person that's going to effect change in the place that you're in, or it could be that what you're there for is the covering and that even though they may not believe in xyz that person is still like your spiritual parent Mm -hmm. you know that's just like you don't disown your daddy because you know you don't like Mm -hmm. something you you disagree about something you still have to take it that way so that's when you really have to and praise the lord they go to bishop this when you really have to seek the face of the god and figure out what your directions are praise the lord bishop how you doing i think people find themselves in places that are the it thing or the popular thing. Whose phone is that? That's King. Yeah, we were talking about the call, answering the call. So that's I had that phone on as a uh, oh. illustration. Oh. Well, go ahead and answer it so I can finish. <laughs> okay, it's <laughs> it's finished. Oh. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> um, you, you know, a lot of times we try to make excuses for a lot of things. Um, um how I know that a person is not supposed to be someplace is predicated upon the word of the Lord. Mm. That's how I know whether you're supposed to be there. You're not supposed to be there. Okay. So now make a case for this. You in a church that doesn't believe in women preachers, mm-hmm. don't believe in women preachers. You feel that you were called to preach. So you're there frustrated. You're trying to change the system because you know that God called you when the word of the Lord says that you're not to build on another man's foundation, get your behind out of there. There's enough places for you to go for your ministry and your call to be celebrated. Let's go. But we go back and we say, well, maybe the Lord, maybe it's always maybe, maybe, maybe. Why do we have to maybe what God said? Do you think God is a maybe God? Do you think he don't know what he's talking about, what he's saying? Uh, before anything happens, before anything happens to you, it already happened with God. Absolutely. He knows the outcome before it began, before, but, 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 I'm sorry, before it starts. And, 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 and that's, a, um, that's a serious thing. And so um, a, a lot of things are like that, you know, uh, uh, and if you are called to a place and, the, uh, and there's quite a bit of opposition in that place that you are in, if you're truly called, you're not frustrated. Mm. Mm. That's right. You're anointed for that task. <laughs> not being able to take it, worried that people don't call your name, we're dealing in we're dealing in the anointing of the ego and not the acceptance of the call. Mm-hmm. And that's very, very serious. Come on. Yeah. Welcome to Warfare Ecology today. It's gonna to be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Uh it's gonna be great. I am a little fired up. I had we had a, a, a home going service today and um really fired up about it. I feel that um Preachers and pastors have debacled the call of God on their lives. And they, um, you know, I would often say, no matter what you do, what happens to you in the week, do what? Come to church. Come, come to church. church. Come to church. Come, come, come to church. It is there that God is going to speak to you. It is there that God is going to minister to you. It's there that's going to uh, come to church. That's, that's, that's all I say. And uh, if you think handling an immature t- child is a problem, Try doing it with an adult. Try explaining, try to put an adult in timeout for having a temper tantrum. 
Try it. You have to be anointed to that point. To that point. And, and when you do it and, 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 and you calm them, people walk away and they say, my God, you are the man for the job. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that. When you say that a person is the man or the woman for the job, one of my, one of my uh, um, sons said to me today, he says, you know, what do you think about the Bible? Because the Bible says that uh, women are not, they're not supposed to have women preachers. I said, where did you get that from? It's in the Bible. Where is it in the Bible? And there's scriptures for it. Where is it in the Bible? And I said, so you have no regard for our women preachers in our church? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You just said it. You said it. You, you, you think I'm off. Yeah, but the people who said it, they got scriptures for it. I said, yeah, let me give you the first scripture they got. Let a woman keep us silent. Yeah, that's okay. You don't even know what we're talking about. So every woman who's wearing pants is going to hell. Deuteronomy 22 and 5, woman shall not wear that. Don't, we don't even contextually put things in place. We just spew it off the top of our head. Any woman praying and prophesying with a head uncovered dishonor the head. So you got prayer dollies on little kids' heads that don't have no head because the head, the Bible already told you a few verses above that that head is her husband. And if she has a husband, then let her head be covered. In the Jewish tradition, he said, but as for us, we have no such customs, neither in the church of God. Just takes a little bit more time to read. Oh, Bishop, you, I mean, you, man, how do you come up with this? By reading the Bible. But did you get it from the book? No, 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 no. We write books so that we can assert our opinions. Ain't that right? The Bible is the opinion of God. Witchcraft and abuse is the opinion of George Bloomer. What's next is the opinion of, 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 of Tamila. And the Midas touch. The touch of the Midas is the opinion of King. No more sheets is the opinion of, of Juanita Minor. And go on and on and on like this all day long. But the Bible is the opinion of God. And at the end of the day, whose opinion matters the most? For it is him that gives us strength. Him that gives us power. I want every one of you that are watching to share it with other friends. Today, every one person asked three. You know, yesterday was a nice amount of people that gathered together to hear the, the, uh, the, the, the fellowship and talk. And I mean, Graham came out of the gate kicking. Uh, you threw up the, the, what you call it, or how you was pulling it off the uh, uh, line. I was going to deal with the last part of it, that which is then is now. Uh, um, uh, uh, Malachi, her scripture for the day was that uh, 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 Adelia was brilliant yesterday. Brilliant yesterday. You know how she started off? She started off by telling the truth, by telling the story. She said, I came into it. And I had to go through a process. And the process I had to go through is this, is that these people who have been around Bishop Bloom has been around him for years, 20 and 30 years. I had only been around for three years expecting the same type of access that they that it took them 30 years. That was brilliant, y'all. Come on. And, it's, and, 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 and it was in a level of honesty that is, that, that, that is pouring out. So you can lift your hands and say, there's hope. You know, there's hope. And when one thing was spoken about, I asked Elder Daniels to come back on because I know that Elder Daniels has an opinion. And I wanted to know what her opinion was on that principle. Do you remember what the principle was? No. Do you remember what it was, King? It was something about Baxter. The Baxter was telling a story about, uh, about something. What was it? Um... Baxter was a was a, a, a cute little girl growing up and the men liked her so the women that were around her felt like she was trying to steal their man so the, to keep that rhetoric from coming to her she old ladies herself down mm -hmm. that was man that that's a woman's conference boy she old lady herself down which became a curse to her curses are things that are spoken mm -hmm. that are spoken Mm -hmm. the other lady she said she was pushed into she she got the wrong counsel uh, uh graham she got the wrong counsel 
went ahead and married. It was only for five months, but went ahead and married somebody. The person's mother moved into the house with them and began to rule her life and had no oil on, on, on the person. All suckers had no oil on them, yet using her oil to promote himself. And she, she got caught up under the cloud because her greatest thing wanted to do was to be married. And she said she was the head of singles ministry in another ministry. She knew the ins, the outs, and the ups, and the downs, and all that concerned that. And that's why I said, oh, Adelia would like to hear this one, because see, everybody's not meant to be married. And the Bible even says it so. Those that are have their perfect gift. Don't worry, uh, Elder Daniels, you're going to get married. Bitch, I ain't worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. Hey girl, hey girl, you spoke up quick to that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am so far from worried about that. Right, I know. And and most people, most people that are far from worrying about that, you know why, right? Why is that, Bishop? Because they have a boo in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Me... Hey, Bishop. you were, hey, you were, hey. You weren't quick on that one. That, that, you was quick, slow right there. <laughs> no, because I need <laughs> No. <laughs> Listen, no, all of you are watching Warfare College. No. Now, Bishop, I was slow about that because I was putting my, my camera back on spotlight. Say whatever so, you want to say. No, Vanita can vouch for me. I was putting my camera back on spotlight so when I spoke, the people could see my face. Oh. Why he got to be in the back room hiding? Huh? I didn't say he was hiding. He ain't in the back room. I didn't say I didn't say he was hiding. I said because you got a boo in the back room. I ain't got a boo in the back room. I got a boo. So you don't understand the term boo in the back room? No. Mm -mm. What you mean? I'm covered. That means like I'm. That means like you're creeping or something. No. What you saying, Bishop? No, boo in the back room means I have someone. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. that's what I'm saying. That's why you ain't worried about all that other stuff. Because if you didn't have a boo in the back room, then you'd be worried. I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, I'm not here to have that discussion with you today. I'm just saying that people that don't have people that don't have a boo in the back room tend to be worried. Oh well. But... I'm not worried. I'm. 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 I'm not worried about my rent because I got a bank account. People that don't have a bank account tend to worry a little bit more than people that that's the point that I'm making. But now King, you bust out laughing, head all down and everything. Why? Uh, Y'all's in, interaction there. Because that, 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 uh, that little pause on the second question. I mean, it, it, <laughs> Listen, it made, now, it, now, to it, Miller, it made it, perfect TV. Because Miller's not a person, if you say that she's going to sit back and get, you know, she's going to come out the stall, but when she did she did. Listen, that's what she she got a word before you even get started. You be saying right. she but <laughs> she ready. <laughs> so so what so what got me? I don't care if she was fixing the camera, or whatever. What got me? When that pause, <laughs> when that pause... <laughs> when that pause came. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. y'all for inviting me to the pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I don't hear I, I don't hear you saying nothing, Vanita. <laughs> yeah, because I, I stay in my place. I'm not part of the pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> but if you need me to put up the giving slide, I got you. <laughs> but listen, but was but was that transaction beautiful for for for, for, for today? It was. And we need a lovely laugh after a funeral that we went through today. Yeah. You know, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Uh, cheers. Woo. All right. Um, right. I'm asking seven persons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven persons today to sow a seed of 133. Seven to sow a seed of 133 seven to sow a seed of 133 in a sacrificial posture. That means I don't have it, but that man spoke it. I've seen miracles take place by the things that he spoke. And this is what I'm going to do in the name of Jesus. Okay. In the name of Jesus. How many days left to this year? 
maybe about 15 or so? 17. 17? Okay. I think we're sitting at about 16 days. About 16? Okay. 16 days left to this year. Okay. I want those of you that are watching and you in the greater Raleigh, Durham, Creedmoor, uh, uh, Burlington, Greensboro area, come and fellowship with us on New Year's Eve from 10, from, from 10 to 12. It's going to be a great, great time in the Lord. All right. Uh, King, who are our guests? And uh, uh, um, uh, uh, let's do our challenges. I'm believing God for seven persons at the end of the program. Seven persons would have given one, uh, $133. That's the challenge that I'm asking for today in the name of Jesus. All right. It's going to be a great afternoon. It's going to be a great, great afternoon as according to the conversation we just had. We know that these guys going to... He's going to do what, what he's conversation going to do. we just have? Booze in the back room? Booze in the back room. <laughs> and answering the call. And, I can say and, booze. It's, it's going to be correct. <laughs> yeah, Tamila talking all that, that junk. That, Tamila, uh, Tamila talking all that junk. Next to me, look up. She done wrote a book entitled Booze in the Back Room. Booze in the Back Room. Uh -huh. <laughs> Covers and everything. Cover already done up and everything like that. No, it, it wouldn't be nothing about booze in the back room. It'd probably be like dating over four, after 40. That's a boo in the mm. back room. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a boo in the back room. Wow. Because yeah. it's different. Yeah. It's different. Mm -hmm. wow. In a different generation. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. it's, it's different because I'm different. I ain't the same person at 40 that I was at 20. It's, it's, it, we have a, you have a whole different kind of conversation. Your conversation that you have at 40 is, a, okay, what's wrong with you? You got high blood pressure. You know, what your finance is looking like at, four, at 20, you just happy to be in love. You know what? I'm going to take that back and I'm going to write the book, Booze in the Back Room. Because <laughs> that's a very, very good piece there. You know, the things that you're discussing at 40, you're not discussing that at 21. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not trying to go to uh, run out to the club and have drinks. You know, you're not trying to go to the skating rink and what's the next movie. You might go to the movie, but if you go to the movies, your movies might be during the, the day and not late in the night. Different things. Yeah. Okay. Let's not go there. All right. Well. Wow. Well, you ready, Bishop? Yes. You ready? I turned it over to you. Mm -hmm. All right, we get ready to take off. Hey, everybody like your seat belts. If you you know you're sitting near aisle, make sure you help somebody. <laughs> if you know that they said they're giving a plane, make sure you're able to help somebody so we can get ready to take off. And this plane is about to take off. Tawanda, Mr. Uh, Tawanda Edie, Minister, is Minister Tawanda Edie, right? It's correct, Minister. Yes, Overseer. Okay. How are you today? Um, and, you, great. and you and you and you are looking you're looking beautiful today. Thank you, yes. thank you so much, Bishop. You're welcome. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Give us your open statement and your offering challenge, and we go from there. Okay, my opening statement is this. In a world, we all want to be the president or the CEO of a company. We want this without going through the ranks and responsibilities of the position of a president. And most start out in an entry-level position. This station is the lowest and least paid, and no one wants that. However, this is the opposite biblically. This is best shown in Mark chapter 9, verse 35, when he said, he sat down and called the 12 and said unto them, if any man desires to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. So ask yourself, did you just get served or are you serving? And my, uh, what was the other thing overseer? Offering, offering challenge. Thank you, got a little flustered there. <laughs> My offering challenge is this. Um, I wanna do um, 133. I wanna stay with Bishop. Um, I will also be sending my offering and I pray that everyone who is called to be a servant, go ahead and make that um, that gift and sow the seed of 133. Amen. Talking about a servant, the seed child is 133. Three, amen. Thank you so much. You were right in line, but I believe what, what we're going to talk about today in the name of Jesus. Okay, this uh, uh, Pamela Farr, how are you doing today? Elder God bless Farr. you, Overseer. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm 
Go ahead. Great, great, great. Give us your opening statement and your offering challenge. Well, my, my opening statement is stop speaking contrary to the word of God, what it says. And stop saying um, that which holds you in bondage and rise to a new level and release the ability of God within yourself. And I had written down my, my C challenge and it was 133. So I, I'm, I'm pleased that I'm listening and hear the word of God and, 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 and I'm falling in line with our bishop. Amen. You're wow. talking about sir. And you're, looking, and you're looking wonderful today. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. 133, stop speaking contrary. It's going to be right in line with what we've got to say today. Elder Cynthia Toes, how are you doing? I'm well, Overseer. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great, great, great. What's your open statement and your C challenge today? My opening statement is uh, out of Genesis in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it was dark. It was formless until God came on the situation and shed some light. Then everything changed and he called it good. And my, my seed challenge is $103. And that comes out of Psalm 100 verse three that says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Amen. Your seed challenge is 103. So you're saying, so you're saying that uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then uh, it's dark, it's, which, it's, it's, it's formless. And then God comes back and he sheds the light on it. Yes. He sheds the light on it. And then not only does he shed the light on it on the first step, but he called it good. Even before he went to the next step, even before it was completed, God stated that it was good. And so, so are you, know, you, my, are, are you, are you conveying your conveyance of this is in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth is dark, formless void and then god said um let there be light now now he shed light on it and there's an illumination so whatever was in the dark can now be seen whatever was formless now takes on the form where you just put the light on it darkness whatever's in the dark is can be seen what was formless can uh, we we can now see that it is formless and 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 what have you and then god said it is good i'm trying to get to the are you saying that uh, there are some people or situations that are in the dark, uh, chaotic and formless that God still sees as good. Is that what you're saying or not? Yes, that God, God can bring, you know, we, we may have started out where, and things have um, not um, been the way we thought they should be. They didn't end the way we thought, it started out good, but it's now into darkness and but, God, but it's a process that God is putting light on that situation. If we look to him and we, just like he creates, we can create a new beginning every day as I put the light on it and call it good and, and add on to each thing, each day or each process that God has given us, even though it's not completed, but look at it as steps, just like God did when he created the earth. He called it good before he got to the second and third and fourth day. He called it good every day. Wow. <sighs> Excellent. I'm not gonna mess with that because then that might mess our whole show up. Go ahead, King. All right, all right. We're going somewhere. And, and, and King, the reason, why, the reason why it hit me is because I just got finished doing that funeral. Mm -hmm. And out of the chaos, out of the darkness, out of the uh, things that did not form, it was good. Mm -hmm. And walking down the aisle on my way to the, what you call it, the amount of people in duress, in the dark, going through various situations, was holding on to a preacher in normal circumstances 
they would be walking away from. Mm-hmm. And you know, it took me, it took me an hour to leave the building. I talked to you after the service was over about what, mm-hmm. what, what my heart was feeling. Amen. Mm-hmm. Great word, woman of God. Yes. Amen. We going somewhere. Brian, uh, give me your, your last name. I didn't write it down. Brian um, Jones. Jones, Jones, Jones. I didn't write it down here. I, I, I had a, a brain slip there. So Brian Jones, give us your opening statement and your offering, child. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Um, my opening statement is this. Um, Bishop, you have been a blessing to my life. And so, and I, I thank you for all you have done. Um, what you probably don't know, which is my opening statement, is how your ministry has blessed my life. Um, I found, I fell upon um, Bethel Family Worship Center and you, can you all hear me clearly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I fell upon you all back in 1998, 99, when my best friend um, and I were in college. It was our senior year. And we felt like we had accomplished all we could. We were raised right. We were reared right and everything, but we were not established or we were not, we did not have, our foundation needed to be more secured and we could not build. And we made a pact that we were going to seek a church out. And I ain't going to talk about the first two bishop, but thank God (laughs) we fell up in your, (laughs) your, I shouted, I got a good shout on, but no word. I went right to sleep. Um, But but I fell up in, (laughs) got some good rest that week uh, and exercise, but I fell up in your church and Bishop, when um, Elder Daniels was talking and Bishop King was talking, and I say this as an intercessor, um, the Lord brought back to me again, the apostle for who all is listening, listening and trying to find a church, what you said earlier, Bishop, who's trying to find direction. The apostle, you, Bishop, is going to help whoever it is um, with their prayer life, their dreams and visions. And back then, Bishop, um, Bishop, I was the bomb. I was doing good, Bishop. I thought I knew ministry and understood until I fell up in, in, in Bethel Family Worship Center. You brought order. And Bishop, what you don't know, I struggled with anxiety then, and it wasn't diagnosed and didn't know. I could not finish that senior year. I had to take almost double the classes to graduate on time. God had opened the door. So, you know, many people testify, God is doing this, God is doing that in my life, but I still needed somebody to call some things to order and to align it so that I could have um, the intentional success and finish strong. And, you know, this is the, the, the month of December. I don't need a weak finish. I don't need a faint or whatever. I need a strong finish so I can have an even better forecast for next year. And so while Elder Daniels and Elder King was talking, I had to write it down because that's just who I am. And um, God, Bishop, brother, <laughs> may possibly sometimes the same thing. Bishop, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next year because even for the prophetic decree that's coming um, that, that we have later on, uh, Elder King um, texts me if I'm, if I'm out of order, but Bishop, the Lord already laid on my heart and said that he's going to bless your projects next year. I don't know what all that meant. I didn't know anything about Patreon. That was two weeks ago when one of the elders um, said what they said to me. So I say this before my opening statement. Although I am educated, <laughs> I stand in awe. I have to sit up on the bishop for my life to be effective for things that I can't quite understand, no matter how grand the visions are and the dreams. I have to sit under an apostle for my life to mean something and for it to have record. Because I say this, Bishop, I say this to a lot of people who think they're so deep and they are people who are so devout and they are. But you know what? I don't ever have. If I miss God, it's all right, because God will never miss me if I stay in a position for him to check me, to send me, and to correct me. So, um, Bishop, that is my opening statement. Um, yesterday during the program, when you all was talking, I don't know what prayer life, I didn't I didn't text Elder King because I wanted to stay in position, but Bishop, I kept seeing clouds. I kept seeing clouds rolling. I kept seeing, and I've, I've never seen that many times. So, I'm in between Exodus and Isaiah. Exodus 13, when the cloud went for them by day, the cloud at night, and Bishop, you know the text just as well as the rest of us. We all know the text. Come 14, an angel intervene, and you talk about stuff like that all the time. When we get to Isaiah 41, it talks about fear not. That was one of our prophetic decrees. The enemy, you talk about it all the time, the enemy that's been messing with us. Um, it says he's going to check all your enemies. He's going to check them all, and he's going to make you a threshing board which is ironic because the last two weeks you've been talking about, um, your guests have been talking about unusual um, weapons. And then today, uh, Elder Daniels opened up talking about 
finances. So I will read, read that scripture, Isaiah 54, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains um, of thy habitation. Spare not, spare not, prepare, spare not, prepare, lengthen thy cords. That's me, that's me ad living. I'm sorry. But, uh, um, spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. Mm -hmm. Thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. And regardless of what degree you may think you have, whether it's formal or informal, whatever degree God has blessed you with, going back to the original, he sent a pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night, to the point that some theologian says it was x-ray vision. You don't have to understand. All you have to do is keep following God, hear the voice of God, obey the voice of God, and you're going to end up in a, in a better place. So my seed challenge, Bishop, um, is 122, because when I add 13, 14, 41, and 54 together, I get 122. Now, my seed was lower, but that was a comfortable seed. That my seed challenge is 122. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. You know, um, I really, really feel it in my spirit that there's going to be a breaking forth of a dam that so much has been held up and, 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 and held back. I was laughing with Elder King as we, I was coming to the studio today and I said to him, I said, you know, we're doing okay, blah, 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 blah. And we laughed for a few moments and so on. He said, thank you, Bishop, for something we do that. And, um, and I said to him, I stopped and I said, but we're doing okay. We're, we're doing, he said, yeah, 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 really, really doing fine, but not as okay and not as fine as we're going to, to, going to do. And I think that 2023 is, I think that what's happened on Wolf Ecology, what's happened with the finances drying up, what happened with people moving the way to doing, all of that is a character, uh, a character stress test to see if we are going to stay in character with God mm. and not lean into sorceries and witchcraft and trickery and manipulation and game playing and smoke and mirrors that we're just going to stay be steadfast unmovable and the reward comes out of that and while you was talking uh son that's what I that's what I what, what I heard and I heard it very very clearly uh, a breaking forth is coming for those of us who have been faithful to God. And um, when it breaks forth in my life, the proof is in the pudding. It breaks forth in the lives of everyone who's around me. Thank you for that word. God bless you. We already see this is going to be great. We already see. Elder Valerie Morrow. How you doing, Elder? I'm Dr. doing well. Dr. Huh? Dr. Morrow. <laughs> That's why you talked about you know, talked about educated folks that would that would be me i have plenty of degrees and um found out i didn't know a whole lot of anything until i came to bethel <laughs> well well you knew about covid I, I did i knew about covid i know i know what i know that's right so um i i wanted to chime were in you ever um, were you ever i keep on going back to it because covid is showing up in so many different ways yes what, that day when it happened on the steps of the church when you went home, were you offended by, by me? Oh, no, no. Because just like you taught us, when you, when, you, when you know something, you meet people at their level of presentation. You told me what you felt, and I told you what I knew was going on behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your mouth. <laughs> So it, 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 it all worked out. It all worked out. Tawana, so I, Tawana, <laughs> you, you, you saw that curveball, right? You know, I told her that a conversation is a ball. She said, you told me, you told me what you felt, and I told you what I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I catch it all. See, see, yeah, I'm a I good catcher. <laughs> you know, I be listening. Yeah. That, that much I do know. You do listen well. You do. <laughs> and remember, that, that's the important part, more than I. So I, I'm going to go back to probably 10 years ago, Bishop, you said something to me in a conclave um, in South Carolina, I think, or Georgia. We were in a little church and you looked at me and you said, why are you so unfulfilled in your fulfilled life? 
I remember. Ooh. Now I see Kobo Satanama. That one statement has stayed with me for 10 years because I believe that for most of us, a lot of us, we don't see where we really are. We don't see what we've accomplished. We are so busy not comparing ourselves against our, against other people, but we're comparing ourselves against ourselves and our own dreams and our own thoughts of who we are, what we should be doing. And so I could never move forward because I always saw myself as unaccomplished, unable to do, un ungifted, and everybody else was seeing me as great, but I couldn't see me as great. And so recently that that those thoughts start coming back. And God said to me, filter your thoughts, filter how you're thinking about Ooh. yourself. Just like shopping, when you go and you go shop and you got a filter there and you got all this stuff that you can look at, but you can pick what you're going to focus on. And God told me to pick what I'm going to focus on, even though all the rest of the stuff is around, all the other stuff is available. I still need to focus on what's true, what's holy, what's right, what you've spoken into my life, what other what the word of God says. I need to focus on that and not what other people. So my scripture for today is Philippians 4 a. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So that's my word. My cheat seat talent for today is $48 because I need everybody to be able to reach that. Give 40 because for a lot of people on the line today, I know that you're not celebrating yourself. You are not seeing where you are. Just like Bishop spoke to me, your life, you think your life is unfulfilled, but guess what? You fool if you on this on this um show today. I want to I want to jump in on that because that is such a it's a marvelous marvelous powerful powerful thing. And um I've had that same thought about several people. I remember saying that to you. And I remember your manifestation that night. I remember your tears. I remember your, your worship that night, how you just came apart. I remember that. But I've had that thought about Wilma Yellick. And I said it to her. I've said it to Wilma Yellick. I've had that thought about Vanita. I've had that thought about Tamila. I had that thought about uh, um, Akisha. I had the thought about Keisha. I think that Keisha is brilliant, brilliant. And I've had that thought and um, Ecclesiastes chapter number three, the latter part of it says that which is now has already been and that which is to be has already passed and God requires the past now. And you brought that scripture right back around to us that God is bringing us back to that place because something phenomenally great is about to happen and Thanks. at the same time we don't know quite how to celebrate or pull in the fulfillment of it and i remember when i had a discussion with elder uh, um elder um daniels on the matter of course i didn't say to her why aren't you unfulfilled in your fulfillment i didn't say it that way what I said to her is this, is that, uh, that perfection is an excuse for procrastination. That it's good when you did it. Well, what are you, why are you fighting yourself on this? Move to that next piece. This is holding you here. And uh, you, just, you just cracked open something. You just cracked open something. And I think it happens more so with the women than with the men. But I'm going to say this. Us men battle with the same thing. We battle with the same thing. Battle with the battle. Yeah. If you if 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 you if you're not celebrated, no matter how many gifts I give you, it's not going to resonate with you. Right. Yep. Wow. That is that 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 is that is that. 
So I want to challenge, I want to challenge right now on that word that she just spoke. I want to challenge 10 persons with a seed of $48. Why? Because it's reachable. Mm -hmm. Why? Because everybody can't do 133. Why? Because in that four, which is open door, and eight, which is new beginnings, that God is going to open up a door of new beginnings for you. Yes. 48. 48. 10 of you. 10 of you right now. And I want you to just to put your name under it. Just say, done, 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 done. If, you are, if, if you've already sold today and you heard that word and it resonated with your spirit, sow again. The Bible says sow in the morning and again in the evening, for thou knowest not which one. 10, 10 of you in the name. I have no way of, uh, I, don't, I can't see what you're doing, but I want, I want 10 persons right now to defy everything that's with you, around you, near you, and I want you to release in the name of Jesus. If you're a woman in ministry, you're married, you have a business, uh, you, 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 you are approaching the marketplace, whatever that is, step out on his promises right now. 10 of you, 10 is the number of a generation. 10 of you, 10 of you, seed 48, start doing it. When you do it, I'm, when we get the 10, I'm going to pray collectively for those 10 persons. And I'm not a prophet, but the things I speak come out of the heart of God. 10 of you in Jesus' name. Start moving right now. Uh, Vanita, did any, did, are anybody moving in the area of the 48? Yes, 10 sir. of you in the name of Jesus. I know we didn't put the ways to give up. Let's do that. Uh, dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559, 1559, I want you to do this. 10 persons right now, get that seed of 48, four open door, eight new beginning, a door of unchallengeable new beginnings. First things happening to you that never happened to you before in Jesus' name. Overseer? Wow. Wow. Amen. So this is the time to give. Let's all do it now right before we go into our lesson. Let's do it. Let's all just take a moment right now and just judge ourselves and give in Jesus' name. Dollar sign, Jim Award, Bloomer, Bishop Bloomer.com, PayPal, 889-1559. Dollar sign, Jim of Warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal, PayPal me at GGB Ministries. Text to give. <clears throat> Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Amen. Let's, let's do it. I'm, I'm giving mine now. Amen. I think there's going to be a word that's spoken today, which is already have, and that this word is going to be prevalent over our lives for this next season of our life. So those of you need to prepare yourself right now. Let's do it. Last time, dollars. Son of Warfare, Zell, Bloom, Bishop Bloomer.com, PayPal, PayPal me at GGB Ministries, Takes a Give, Takes Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Amen, amen, amen. Well, Bishop, amen. You know, like this say, we've already started in a direction today, but I'm just going to just going to point some things out and we can go in that direction. Most of us have come to Bethel at different uh, uh, points in our life. And, um, you know, the Bible said John the Baptist was the voice of one crying into the wilderness. And then they went out to hear him. They went out to hear the voice. And so we've got, to, I want us to just talk about today uh, how God brought us to the voice that and he has assigned in our life. You know, we, uh, we have a great general that God has assigned us to. And God has reached from the different areas of the country or the areas of the state. And he brought us to this place to whatever gift that he has in us to cultivate that gift. It was his choice to bring us and sit us in this ministry. And we are still here. And so we need to see that all of us that are still here are flourishing in the gift because of the, of the voice that God assigned over. And we didn't run. We, we, took, we took the chastisement. We took the rebuke. We took the praise. But we stayed through ups and through downs. And now we're seeing the fruit. And so we see growth in everyone that's on the platform today, growth from those that are behind the scenes, growth from those that have been watching for the last three years. 
And so because we have been connected to the vine, amen, the Bible teaches to abide, abide, abide. And so we want to I'll just talk about for a few moments, maybe one or two things, talk about maybe you, the way that you came to the ministry or you can talk about the gift that God has pulled out of you since you've been in the ministry and your service in that area. And as I, so mine, it's just so long, I, I wouldn't have the time to talk about the things that I was totally the opposite of what I am now, totally, totally <laughs> the opposite of, I, well, this is, it, it mirrors, when I first came, what I'm at now mirrors nothing from what, when I, when I first came is, I mean, and I just thank God because of, of, of just being able to stay attached to what he's brought me to. And, to, and, and, and the half has not been told. Amen. The half. Has, and we, I mean, there's so much more. So we're just going to open the floor up. And I'm sure you, you're bursting forth because I know that there's God is doing great things and he's ready to propel us. And so I want to hear and I want the people to hear. And as the people hear, I want you to still continue to people. If you hear a testimony and it resonates with you, give and so into that word and watch God flourish you and grow you from the, from the soil that he planted you in, in Jesus name. So the floor is open. Um, I want to say, is- I want to say this as, as we're opening up the floor, because you said something overseer that is very, very powerful in this moment, the voice that they, that, that they were set up under my sheep mm-hmm. know my voice and another, they were not here. And yes. as a, uh, 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 um, Morrow was speaking um, as she was articulating and then she dropped the 48 that number resonated with me very very strongly and uh, I said there's 10 people and a lot of times uh, we go into the next thing without accomplishing that which the word was sent to do now there are yes. 10 individuals and if you are assigned to my voice and you have $48 anywhere on your persons or have the ability to get it those are the sons and daughters that I want moving right this moment before we go into this lesson on today. Remember, the principle behind this seed was that it is reachable. So God put you in a place where you could reach it. Then it's about uh, you not being able to celebrate the accomplished you. That is a demon. That's demonic. It's, 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 I mean, you, 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 you have done it. Now, 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 no one wants to be around a person who's celebrating themselves all the time. Got it. But every now and then, that's okay. So I'm waiting on 10 persons and I want to take five minutes. In the next five minutes, I want 10 persons sowing that seed of 48, $48 in the name of Jesus. If, 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 if great cousin in New Bern, North Carolina or Mississippi does not receive a Christmas present from you, fine. Give one to yourself. That 48 belongs to God because you heard it. It's very, very serious. We are confronting and breaking spirits in the name of Jesus. So here we go now. Father, I thank you. And I set myself in agreement with Maro right this moment, what she spoke that you have carried us back today, 10 years ago, back to today. That a spirit of celebration and accomplishment is going to take place in the hearts of those who are sowing the seed of new beginnings. And it is so, and it shall come to pass. And our broke days are over. And all apprehension and all distractions are confronted by the word that I just spoke in the name of Jesus. So now I speak to husbands and wives and daughters and sons and nephews and cousins and spiritual individuals. I speak to folks who are prophets and ushers and what have you. Release that seed right now, the seed of accomplishment, an open door, a new beginning. We're stepping into an area that we've never been before. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. 
Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. 10 persons sowing the seed of 48. 10 persons sowing the seed of 48. Do it now. Get right with God and do it now. Get right with God. He will show you how. Right down at the cross, Jesus shed his blood. Get right with God. Get right, get right with God. You know, um, the other day, uh, Tuesday night in Bible study, I was sitting on the set doing Bible study, going over it. And Vanita, I don't remember the song that was sung, but I, I began to sing as if Maurice Rogers was behind me playing. It was like an angel showed up and I couldn't stop. If you didn't see it yet, go back and see it. It's, 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 it's an amazing impartation. And, and, and I'm hearing angels right now, angels right now moving on our behalf, filling our atmosphere with music. I hear the music in the air. I hear up above my head, there is music, there's angels, there's, there's an atmosphere being established and set, and set. Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus. We're almost there, we're almost there. 48, 48, you lying devil. You lying devil that will convince God's people that they don't have when it is asked of them for kingdom purposes, but always figure out a way to get it when it's sowing to the flesh. You lying spirit, you lying spirit, release that seed today in the name of Jesus. 48, 48, dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559, dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell Bloomer, at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. The devil is a liar and he is defeated in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. All right, King, I'm gonna let you go ahead and start talking. Uh, the Amen. folks have heard, uh, you heard my voice, uh, heart not your heart, Release it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm ready to open up the floor, but I'm going to say this right before I open it up. Bishop, a lot of times our financial success is attached to a voice also. And we a lot of times we miss it because we're not under the right uh, flow. We're under, not under the right flow. And so, and there were many times in my life, you spoke, uh, you, uh, when back in the, in the days that you were speaking, of, uh, you know, the parking lot's going to change and and, and you, you, I'll never be broke again. And those are brokest days of my life. You understand? Those, I mean, those were literally broke days with you because, but because I stuck it out and kept listening to the voice and didn't get, didn't get offended. The Bible says the best of those that did not get offended. I mean, you would, you would confront me and you would challenge me publicly and behind the scenes. But because of that, it broke some things. But people got to stick with the voice long enough to, to, to see to see the, the fruitfulness thereof. So we've got to stick with it. You've got to stick with it. So we're going to open the floor up. How this I remember board. you coming across, I remember you coming across the parking lot. Uh, this is before we had it paved. We had just mm -hmm. moved into the place when it wasn't there long and the whole parking lot wasn't paved. Remember we had the big fence up because we mm -hmm. I remember. Mm -hmm. inside of it. And um, um, I, I had a white Lexus mm -hmm. and I drove up on the parking lot and you was walking about the side. This was before we had the canopies and everything like mm -hmm. that. It was just raw in the building. And uh, the building was clean, but that's all we had. We didn't have money to make decoratively, make it nothing. And um, I called you in the car and you sat down in the car. And, uh, uh, and I said to you, um, you know, how much money do you have in, in, in the bank? We had that sort of kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. And I talked about, I noticed that when you give up the offering, you it's, it's, it's always a dollar or two. How do you expect God to what have you? And I um, remember saying to you, are you okay? You know, I'm not trying to tell you off. I had to cushion because I was very, very hard. And, 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 and just, if it came to my mind, I said it, you know, <laughs> I had to grow too. Um, and um, you sat in the car and you said, you're going to do better. 
um, that which is now has already passed, has already been. And that which is to be has already passed and God requires the past now. Do you know what it is to stand up and say, uh, 12 people is going to give a seed of $200 and you're the first one standing walking across the floor. Do you understand the, the accomplishment that that is? Prosperity. Mm-hmm. And when you said that your finances is connected to a voice, it is. Mm-hmm. But the reason why it's hard to raise money in the church is because the shysters and the crooks mm-hmm. has desensitized people mm. to kingdom principles. And I just thank you for bringing that up. Yes. So, so Bishop, can I add on the other side um, for some of us who probably, when you said we needed, you know, that the parking lot's going to change and we're going to continue to grow. If you can't um, appreciate the things that you've accomplished, you'll hold on to what you have because you scared that you can't make it or do it again even though you've already done it one time. So there's one thing to not have, but it's another thing to have and hold on to because you can't see how well you, you, that you have the ability to do it all over again and do it better. So you get stuck. So just like King was saying back in that day, he didn't have enough. I came in and we had, we didn't have a lot but we had enough to give or at least go to the car lot. But because I couldn't see that we were fulfilled, that we even could grow and accomplish more, I was scared to give, scared to take a new step, scared to step out on ministry, holding back on the anointing and the gifting that God gave. But and when you started preaching and teaching, it opened up my eyes that there are more opportunities, there are more gifts on the inside of me, there is more things in, for me to accomplish than what I had already done. And then for me to look back and say, well, you already did something before, you got you, you might have something to, to contribute. You know, it's Bill Gates along with the billionaires of the world, but Bill Gates uh, really puts this in perspective. And he said, it's impossible for a billionaire to go bankrupt and stay bankrupt. Mm. Once you have learned how to do it, you can do it again. Mm. And I'm uh, going to add on to your word and you can do it better. Mm. You can do it better. Once, Once you've learned to do it, once you figured out the mechanics on doing it. So, you know, uh, how many times publicly that we know, according to record, that Donald Trump filed for bankruptcy. He files for bankruptcy on one day on buildings in New York City and then goes to Atlantic City in another city and builds casinos. Files for bankruptcy in this area and goes and buy uh, 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 what they call the uh, uh, the uh, the shuttle. He owned the shuttle from LaGuardia to Washington, D.C. That was the shuttle because people worked in New- lived in New York but worked in Washington, D.C. And they had a shuttle and those businesses was giving them vouchers so they can get on a plane and be in Washington quicker than they can get from, <laughs> from, <laughs> from Riverside Parkway to the Deacon in New York City. Your commute in the city is two hours. You got to get up at six o'clock in the morning in order to be at work by nine. Mm. Yet the shuttle, you can make it to LaGuardia Airport and be in Washington, D.C. in 30 minutes. And he bought the shuttle, bought the shuttle and put his name on it, Trump shuttle. Eastern Airlines used to control it because he knew the mechanics. And if you took every dime away from him right now and give him a few weeks, a few months, he will do what he did because he understands that principle. What Satan does to us, he makes us forget what we have did. Uh, see, I see a little in bonics in there, what we had done, what we have did 
He makes it impossible because with God, we continue to do it even though it's done. And so where one doesn't have it, so they don't release, the other one has it and doesn't release for fear, for, for the fear that they might not have it again or can't produce it again. And the devil is a liar. You, the morals can produce whatever they want to produce. Amen. Uh, uh, Dr. Squeegee took care of his family clean, clean. with a sponge yes. and a bucket of water. Mm -hmm. And they lived good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those of you that are watching today, break this curse over your life. Get a seed and sow it today in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. and place a demand on it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right this moment, begin to move. Mm -hmm. King, let's go to something before we miss the whole show today. <laughs> the, floor, the floor is open. Um, so there's been growth, so let's hear about your, your experiences uh, as, as the, in the voice, you're attached to the voice, and let's, let's go and encourage other people to get attached to their voice, and they, they hear their voice, so let's, so let's, let's talk. The floor is open. All right. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to go back a little bit. Um, First, to talk about my first time I ever gave, because I didn't grow up in the church like most people from New York City. And um, as children, we were like dropped off at church and then we walk in one way and walk out the other way. And my parents didn't know we're two little girls out there just walking around, going to the parade. But um, when I moved to North Carolina, there was a time when I went to the um, safety club for the first time. Um, I wasn't religious. I didn't know about being saved or anything, but I always talked to God as a child from the age of seven up, having dreams, reoccurring dream, one in particular. And um, not out of my need because the $10 that I gave that night was not given because I needed, but was from the heart. And before I got home that night, not only did I get that money back, but it was it was 10 times that. And it was something that I, I needed, didn't know it was coming, but how that was the beginning of my understanding of who God was. And that has set me in a position where I know that money is a tool, but God's got my back. And that was the dream that I had reoccurring as a child when the um, arrows were hitting me in the back constantly, constantly, God was telling me, and I didn't learn this until I got to Bethel, um, because of the learnings and the teachings, that this was um, God saying to me, I've got your back. And many a times he has said that. So I think a lot of people I know, I'm not the only one, have been going through because of the demands that are going, not just from us, but from family members. But God has set us up to be in position for the many miracles that are already taking place in eternity. And they're going to unfold if we would just stop and listen to what we're saying out of our mouths and pay attention to those words that come to snare us and know that God has got this. So I thank God for that 133 that I did write down. Um, Bishop Bloomer, uh, I've said to you in the past before about how when we talk about connections and things like that, and it was the worst time of my life. Yes. Didn't know what was going on, was not say, was uh, under the influence of uh, narcotics and drugs. And God showed me you. My God. But he didn't show me you uh, as when I got to the church. He showed me you now. But he allowed me to see you from the choir um, when we were having rehearsal, the back of your head. And, and it just opened wide open that this was what I showed you that night when God saved me. He had saved me in eternity, but he revealed to me who you were. And when I finally realized these things keep coming, they keep coming because we are snared by the words of our mouth. And that could be true in the positive, that we are to continue to say what God has said about us 
and um, that we will not fear and we're to trust God, trust him with our substance. And so I'm in a place right now where everything that could hit um, from 2016, um, I, I'm that in fact, just thinking about that man who treaded water where they said he fell overboard from the ocean liner and how he tread water. So how do you tread water that long? It has to be by the grace of God. And so for me and myself, I feel like I have been treading water since 2016 for all that has hit my personal life. And I'm not the only one. We all have a story. Um, but um, it has shown me that God has always been there. And it's been miraculous. And I thank God that we all will have a testimony to give. So I'm, I'm reiterating the 133, thanking God for showing me you. And the first time um, I heard about you was at the, uh, what was it, the Fayetteville Colise Coliseum. And you had a young man who came in, and you and your wife and your two little children, and you talked and you preached about how God slam dunk Satan out of, <laughs> out of heaven. And I was like, who is this man? And, you know, tried to find you for a long time. So that was a long time. They were little kids. And of course, I was blocked. <laughs> but God. And so a couple of times I was invited to Bethel and I didn't come for whatever reason, but I read and heard witchcraft in the pews and I knew where I needed to go. And so I got a, 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 um, a prophecy from Miles Monroe at another church. I didn't know about names and all this, but I knew that this was from God and about the impartations that were coming to me. So that was like in 1996, mm -hmm. I believe. And so I didn't know what that meant. A lot of times people speak to you and they think everybody's churched, but we're not. But I, I researched things and I love the word of God because I knew there was power in words, period. And now we're talking about the word of God. We have to know what God has said about us said about the man that he has set over us. And um, I remember coming to you and bringing, it was so hard for me to do that because I'm not a person that wants to be out front. But that day when I came with the two globes. Yes. Little, the little, the little globe in the office bedroom, now. And told me God has given you the world. And I'm thinking, where is this coming from? These things, were, but I could hear. And because I could hear, that's what made me obedient and afraid, but <laughs> just wanted to say there's so many other times that he has said things. And as an intercessor, I've been learning and know that there are things that you hold and you keep and you pray about. So I just want to thank God for all the stuff that you have done, um, the impartations that are taking place and the growth in the family and your family. Your children have been a blessing to me, just watching them grow. And um, Brother Graham, Elder uh, Apostle, um, Overseer Graham's father was the first one I remember seeing. And when I got there, I said, yep, this is where I need to be. <laughs> so I just thank God for- Preach that word, Bishop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just the joy, you know, and um, what was it, um, 1999, and how God has opened up things. And that was just before 2000, when everybody thought the world was going to blow up because of... Y2K. Uh, yes. <laughs> and you guys were off doing what you did. And so um, putting on the plays and just, just the imp constant impartations. And that laughter is a medicine. And I thank God because the joy of the Lord is and will always be my strength. And just that one word. And then at, um, at the um, con concave, conclave we had, yes. I just spoke to someone, and I think it was Gail, Elder Gail, we were talking, and I said, just one word from God, just one word will change your whole life. And that's one word has kept me through the pandemic. And then for, um, I can't remember his name, Bishop, um, they got up and prayed the prayer. House. No, and he's, you told him to pray again because he just said. Tiff, Tiff. Yes. And it was literally right behind me saying that. He got up and said, 
Father God. He said, thank you. And it, that was it. And it tore me up. And um, I was just like, God, constantly, constantly, you know, is speaking to us. And if we would just hear and see and receive, and then we would be able to release what God has given us to release. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wow. Well, Bishop, I remember when I came to your church, I was under heavy witchcraft. I had two young ladies who did everything they could to try to destroy my life and my marriage um, and speak curses over my children. And when I got out of there, when God finally helped me get out of there, I just kept praying to God. I said, God, just send me to a pastor who is real and who is speaking from the word of God. And I'll never forget, I was just up in the middle of the night and your um, show, Spiritual Authority, was on. And I didn't, it was just playing in the background. I didn't see you, but I heard your voice. And it's like something clicked. I was like, whoever this is, I'm going to see him. And I found out it was you. And I came to a couple of services. And then I'll never forget when I was sitting in the parking lot waiting for one of the services to start. And um, I was just looking, wasn't paying attention to anything in particular. And I saw an old map just unroll, you know, back in the day when it kind of unfolded. And it was a map. And it was like an old world map, but it still had all the cur um, current countries and everything. And then all of a sudden I saw a, it was like a pen back in the day when it had like a quill and it was in like an ink pot. And all of a sudden the ink pot fell over. And then it started, the ink started going um, from the middle of North Carolina and it started saturating in the middle. Then it just kept reaching up towards Canada. It kept going down to the um the, the islands and it just kept going the, the ink was moving and I told you this um and it was just like confirmation how your ministry has just continually grown and it just continually keep moving and you have been such an inspiration to me and you helped me in so many times um many times um that I actually kind of just walked away from the church I actually mm -hmm physically left the church. I would send my children and my husband would bring the children, but I didn't want to be involved in it. It wasn't with the church that I had issue with. It was other issues. And yet I could fear you, you, your prayers. <laughs> I didn't want to come back to church, but I just had this desire to come on back. You're muted. I can't hear you. I remember that season. Um, there was a lady that was coming to the church and she had a white husband. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. You remember that 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 person? I don't I don't remember the lady's name. Yes, it was a um a friend of a friend. Yeah. Okay, that was a friend of yours. It was our friend, yes, but she was more of um the, uh, Edwina. But yes, I know who you're talking about. Okay, it was her name was Wilhelmina. Okay, it was during that season. I I still pray for her and him and look for them in the realm of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's great that you brought that up. I um. Um, I would, um, and it was during that particular um, season that I don't know what what department you worked in or if you was working in anybody, but I noticed that something had happened. I don't know what it was. We never, you and me never had a discussion about it. No. But um, uh, I went into deep intercession because I knew that you were a true daughter of mine. And I also knew that there was a lot of ministry that was on the inside of you that you had to give. But everybody is not to be dealt with the same way. You can't pour all down everybody's throat. You can't slap all on everybody's head. You know, there are special cases that need specialists in order to do the uh, open that thing up and operate and sold them up so that when they get sold up, they, they can heal and not have an infection on the inside because the hands that opened them up were dirty. The hands gotta be clean. And I, I, I'm sorry, jumping in there, but that 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 I, I remember that time. Yes, and um, you know, when I came back, um, I was healing from some deep wounds, and like you said, I, I had to have time to heal, and it took several years for me to actually heal and get set free from that. But fast forward to COVID, <laughs> COVID opened up a whole new world for me through warfare ecology. Um, I was nominated, I think, it was through Janice. Minister Janice, who suggested I be one of your readers. I was like, yeah, I'll read. Um, 
Um, and I got picked on by you because me and my thick tongue. <laughs> but, you know, these are like the best years of my life. I've learned so much by reading, by listening to the panel, and but most important, importantly, by being, you know, listening to you teach and explain. The best part that I can say that I've had since I've been in Belleville is that you give us the opportunity to ask questions. I mean, I have never been a part of a ministry where a pastor lets you ask questions. And if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. You let us know. And that has opened up my, my mind to ask questions, to understand what words mean, to look up the definition of words and the anonyms and the synonyms. And it has broken a lot of the dogma and the religious traditions over me um, in my walk with Christ. Um, but yeah, you have been such an inspiration to me. Um, Overseer King has been an inspiration to me as well. He has helped me so much um, learning how to be a servant. Um, I've said in my opening statement, um, we all want to be served. But in the Bible, and Jesus specifically said, if you want to be, the, I guess, the greatest of all, you got to be the least of all and be a servant. And I learned through Overseer King with his graciousness on how to serve a man of God um, with dignity and, you know, the highest level. I've learned so much and it makes me feel good to know that, you know, it's okay to serve. You know, everyone wants to sit at the table, but no one wants to go out and get, somebody got to get the food. Somebody got to get the drinks. You know, we have to learn how to be able to serve and stop looking for someone to serve you. So, you know, through um, Elder Tamila Daniel, she has helped me so much with her new book and helping me to kind of focus my thoughts because I have so many thoughts and ideas that I want to get, um, you know, to be able to be effective in my ministry. Um, I never told nobody, but I had a dream a long time ago, Bishop. And in this dream, I was trying to get to TD, TD Jakes. And, but you was there and you were saying, um, but you haven't done what I told you to do. Why are you trying to get the TGJ? You haven't done nothing I told you to do. And when you were saying this, I just saw these um, things pop out. I saw books popping out. I saw a podcast. Pop I saw all these things popping out as you were saying it, but I'm trying to get to TGJs. And he was like, no, you can't go to TGJs until you do what I tell you to do. And now I'm in this opportunity to kind of get those things manifested. So I just thank you, Bishop. You have been a blessing to me and my family, my boys, and I just love you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Bishop. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. What were you, what were you going to, what, uh, King, where, where were you staring the show today? Where were you going to go uh, in the show today? Well, I, the, the, Valerie, I started out. Valerie dropped that bomb on us. Well, I, I kind of started, but like I just watched the Holy Spirit about how people are attached to your voice and how that voice pulled them into their destiny. And um, some of the stories I do know, you remember the story of Valerie and Mara, she tells it quite often about how she wasn't a doctor, was Jeez. not gonna be a doctor when you spoke into her life. You remember that? And that I love, now listen, you're talking about a, like Valerie Mara, I love to hear her tell that story, you know, and, and how her, the voice, I just think she didn't have that voice pulling her you understand, and 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 and, and it's, I mean, it's and that's where the office was going today. I, I knew I know a lot of the stories that are up here today, but I just wanted the, the story to bless the people that are watching. And, and no, no, I I I, I absolutely so agree. I was the reason why I said that because I looked up at I looked up at the time. We got like fifteen minutes left in the show, so as we're doing it, let's do it in increments of like ninety seconds, and so that we can have some. Um, camaraderie with the with with the audience that's out there if the holy spirit moves us someplace else then we'll go but let's try to um um uh tr to try to do that no, no no problem at all when valerie came in she carried us back to 10 years ago and that <laughs> set the that set the whole you know and um today in the funeral i i asked you for i had a scripture and the message i was going to teach on uh, come to find out the scripture I was going to use, everybody was using that scripture. 
Mm-hmm. So I sat in the pulpit to you and I said, I don't want to go there. They used that scripture already. Find me a scripture to go along with uh, being here today and gone tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Remember that, right? Mm-hmm. And so you went and you found the scripture and so on and so forth. And after I read the first verse of the text, I could, I, I, the whole house was, the whole house shifted. And I want to teach, I want to teach ministers how to read a room. Mm-hmm. Because the message today is a result of being able to read the room. And when I had the friends of that girl, which was about 15 or 16 of them, stand up in that room and connect themselves to that person who was laying in that casket, in that coffin, and broke down in tears and felt they need to come back to God and felt that they needed a a spiritual voice in their life, that's a result of reading the room. Other preachers would have just got up there and told them, y'all going to hell, let's repent, uh, get rid of them tattoos and get them rings out of your face and da 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 so on and so forth like that. Missed the point where the two things she loved doing and didn't do it much, but the two things she loved doing was going to church and going to the beach. Mm-hmm. Going to church and going to the beach. And her brother told me that the church she loved going to was our church for they had been in many churches but didn't move her now that's something my brother mm-hmm. uh, uh jones said he said he said he said man uh, uh, uh um i went to those churches i would dance and shout and then i go to sleep man you'd be in trouble if you went to those churches and didn't get you a good body workout you had to get a body workout and then you you, you sleep through the mess until the music kicked again so you can get up and dance again so let's 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 work this next 15 minutes well in Jesus' name. Amen. I think Brian was ready to say something before. Bishop, again, I couldn't graduate. I had I had to come to Bethel my senior year of college. Um, I called Apostle Rings and told Wait, what's her. What's your profession now? School social work. School social worker, good. Now we're gonna social rock this. Work. Here we go. Uh-huh. Ironically, we're declared mental health professionals. Bishop, I could not manage my senior year without coming to Bethel. That's just the way that God graced it. Long story short, here I am. I I, I went home. Um, end up coming back to Bethel five years later. But Bishop, I didn't come back without the Lord touching me. And you prophesied to me before I came. I had a dream. Um, one of the platform preachers. Um, out from California it was in a dream and um, I had already left my home church I said, I'm done I had church hurt which Tawana talked about yeah. and in this dream I saw this person I said God that's not who I prefer to listen to but you got me here whatever you will want that will be done I flew from the back of the church to the front of the church there was nobody there but that preacher and there was two angels on the side he reached over the pulpit he had already been preaching and said your problem is you don't want to submit well it was more complicated than that Never mind. He didn't ask me a question. He said, you have gone as far as you can go. And Bishop, I'm saying this because I know that somebody is listening. You've gone as far as you can go. You can prophesy, you word of knowledge, you know, scripture, you can break it up. You will go no farther. And Bishop, next thing I know, you were in Wilmington, North Carolina, I think two or three months later. Um, I have to ask my mom all the time to help me. Bishop, but at the end of the service, you pointed to me and said, you're going to have um, a, a, an angelic visitation, angelic visitations from the Lord. You didn't know I had already had one. Bishop, when I had that dream, I was on my couch. Um, when I woke up, there was somebody standing over me. Um, but when I jumped up, there was nobody there. And then I, I discerned somebody around the room. Mind you, now you know you can't discern it if God don't give it to you. I ran around the corner, and there was nobody there. I opened the room door because my mom was living with me. Mama, did you call me? I know she didn't call me Bishop, but <laughs> but I had to make sense of what I didn't understand. When she said no, I closed the door and said, okay, Lord, I'll surrender. And I ended up at Bethel Family Worship Center. I just, that, that's just all to it. So gifted, all you want to, saw all the visions I wanted to see, word of knowledge was on point. Yeah, however, I had to come set up under you, Bishop, Apostle, in order to, for the rest of my life to fall in place. And you told me years ago, I said, I want to preach on a platform. He said, what do you do? Social worker, you're in your ministry. Go sit down. Well, Bishop, the things that God has aligned now that's going on in Wilmington, there's other people that have not been able to do it, Bishop, and people have sought out from across North Carolina and the country.
country, two or three other states, but one particular type of thing that I was doing that God gave me the vision for. My apologies. That's about 120 seconds. God bless you, Bishop. Wow. And you traveled two and a half hours. How, how far are you from the church? You, how far do you live from the church? It's exactly two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. And so it's more of a challenge to you for me. To, I, don't deal, I can get to the church in, in two minutes. In fact, I can run to the church on the show and get back with you, you know, step, but you, you know, two and a half hours. And so you are, you've heard your voice. And so you said, well, whatever the distance, I've got to get to my voice. Wow. It? And, and that, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's yes. amazing. That's sure dedication, no excuse. You know, God speaks. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Wow. Cynthia. How you know, there's doing? people that there's people that live up the street mm -hmm. and don't well, come I, got two hours. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bishop. Well, obviously, I uh, found out about this ministry um, through my sister. Uh, I lived in South Florida, and um, but there's two specific occasions that really stand out, and um, one of the first ones was actually. 10 years ago, uh, this month, and it was the end of the year, um, there was a, some type of a conference, um, a convention center somewhere, and actually it was at the end of the conference, everyone had cleared out of the building, the preaching was done, the, the, uh, the band was still playing, and it was my sister, myself, and Stag, and we were, we were getting ready to leave the building, and you know, to that point, everything was pretty, you know, normal. You know, I, I was pretty, I had gone to a Baptist church where, um, you know, I was probably the only person of color there. So you could imagine it was just totally different. So I wasn't used to how the Holy Spirit worked and all that. And as I was exiting the building, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me. And I mean, I couldn't even just stand up. It was just, I, I didn't know what was going on. And basically, God was preparing me for when I got back home a couple of weeks later, because my life had changed completely from that point on, because at that time, um, my husband had a, a, a condition that uh, he died for 37 minutes. And that, that, that situation prepared me to be able to handle what I was going to go through the next year and a half. And so during that time, you know, I, I would listen to um, to uh, you on, you know, you could you were streaming, even though we didn't have warfare ecology at that time, you were streaming and I would listen to your time and I would come up for the conferences. And one time I came up to one of the day sessions and you were talking about spiritual fathers and asking people. Who, who, who is their spiritual father? And I remember saying to you, because I, I had gone to several churches and no, I didn't really have, I said, I don't have a spiritual father. And at that time you told me, you said, I'm your spiritual father. And from that point on, you know, I was connected to you. And, um, you know, I've, I just noticed that this ministry is so different from anything else that I had ever heard, even though I was saved, even though I was going to church, I was involved in ministry, I was involved in choir, worship team, this and that, you know, Bible study, but this was on a deeper level. And that's, you know, I, and I felt like I had to be connected to, to um, understand what I didn't even know that I didn't know. And so, um, so I'm thankful. And then you know, of course, I got involved, you know, I was asked to be a reader. And so over these last few years, I mean, the amount of information that um, I've gained and the understanding um, just from being on Warfare Ecology has just been amazing. Wow. Well, I guess I'm the last one, Bishop. I, um, I first, my first encounter with you was at a marriage conference. Um, you haven't had one of those in a long time. And all I remember is the question on the floor was my marriage won't work if six, maybe seven, eight hours later, I was at the last <laughs> table. You have worked everybody. I mean, we it, folks 
finding out people told all their business, cussing, fussing, all everything. I said, what kind of ministry is this? Well, we at the church or were we in Holly Springs? We were, were in at some resort. At the resort. Okay, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, you need to do that one again, Bishop. But um, you had us all away and we we you you introduced your book about finding the right mate and um so my husband said um you know this is a ministry like we never experienced before i said you got that right and i'm not sure if i want to go back (laughs) (laughs) so then we 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 it was time for we realized it was time for us to leave the church that we were in and we were looking around for um um the right church and my husband and i had decided i can't come up with my list of churches that i wanted to visit and um, we had sought wise counsel from a bishop um, down in Jacksonville, Florida, um, Bishop Vaughn McLaughlin. And he said, um, which, you know, do y'all want to start your own church? And my husband said, no, we don't want to do that. He said, well, why don't you look at, um, think about going to see um, Bishop Bloomer? Because he's crazy and y'all crazy too. Y'all probably get along just fine. Wow. And um, we said, uh, we'll go and visit. And um, we walked through the door. We heard you preach that first time. And my husband said, this is home. Wow. And I said, what about my list? I need to go visit all the other churches. And I still haven't visited not one of those churches yet because we uh, (laughs) sat down and we've been here ever since and serving and working. And and I could just remember thinking, um, you know, I, I had been in churches where I was, I felt like I didn't have any more to learn from the person that that was teaching me. And it was such a fresh air to have somebody to know more than I knew. Um, and that sounds, I don't know what that sounds like to other people, but you, I just needed to be around somebody who could, who was a level or two higher than me that could impart into me and give me something that I hadn't had before. And I'm just so thankful that God brought me um, to you. Now, this is the second time today you said something that's very, very powerful. I don't know how we're going to do it, but between now and February the 14th, we're going to do a marriage seminar. Uh, yay! In that building, we're not going to go to another witch call it. They're right. going to come there um, and start Saturday morning and it ends when it ends. Yes. Those of you that are watching, Right now, get yourself ready. In the next few days, we're going to have a date for you. I, When you said it, it just jilted in my spirit. It jilted in my spirit. And you know what? Someone, while you were talking, sold the seed and under the seed, they said, for marriage, family, relationship. Wow. Amen. This is the time for it. This is yeah. the time for it. We're going to combine. It's going to be a marriage, family. Remember, we used to have the conferences. I'm uh, uh, Vatilla wouldn't remember this. The family conference. We did it in Wilmington at the mm-hmm. Hilton Hotel. Of course, this is 15 years ago. Right. But uh, it, it encompassed the, 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 the singles, the married, the, the, all that came together. We are, I'm sorry, but I hear God. And the way that my ministry works, it doesn't work with a, with a planner that you plan for the whole year. It works with God speaking and we just moving into what God is saying. And you just, you, 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 you just let us there with a confirmation from someone who don't go to our church, who, 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 who just wants some insight on their marriage, their family relationship. And we need to figure out how to, how to promote it. And no, uh, Valentine's day, I'm always doing the relationship seminar, the relationship clinic. It ain't going to be like that this time around. COVID done came. We're doing something different. We're going to Amen. remember we said one in one of the seminars, we used to open up like this, uh, uh, Valerie, um, I'm controlling, but my I'm, I'm in control, but my wife is controlling. You remember that? My, my computer froze. Of course. I didn't hear you. <laughs> we had, we, we, one of, one of the openings to one of our seminars was I'm in control, but my wife is controlling. Oh yes. That was the, <laughs> Yes. Or, or my wife is my wife is in control and I am and I'm controlled. Yes. Uh, in control and controlling. And that was that was the catalyst for that yes. particular meeting. Let's Whew. let's let's get ready for it. And what about yes. the people? What about people? Vanita gonna be bothered by this, but I'm gonna say this. 
What about the people? Because she wants certain things to be kept for Patreon, and so it will. Right. But what about the women whose husbands are dead and they're still married to them? Uh, who, refuse, who refuse to obey till death do us part. The death has come, but you've not still done a part. Yes. I'm going to minister to people who are married to a doppelganger ghost spirit that rules their life and they can't move on. I'll be there. <laughs> We're gonna start working on it. Seasons. It don't have to be a lot. Season. We no. go to a multi-purpose room or some room in that, yes. in that sanctuary, someplace there. And there it is. Saturday morning, nine o'clock, have breakfast. Yeah. Go in it. 12 o'clock, have lunch. Go with it. Four or five o'clock in the afternoon. Everybody go home. But we got delivered. We talked about it. We talked about our children. We talked about our children and the choices and decisions that our children are making. Let me share this with you. I feel the Holy Ghost. Let me on the family side. On the family side. You know, the greatest battle with a with 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 a kid is when they turn 13 to 21. Mm -hmm. The greatest battle with a parent is 13 to 21. The parent is still trying to parent and the child is trying to grow up and disconnect yeah. from that cord to which the parent has caused them. And some of the conflict comes because the way that the child decides to go is not the way that mom or dad wanted them to go, but they have their own path and they have to, you know, they have to follow their own path and their own journey. And that's where the, that, that's where the uh, conflict comes in mm -hmm. at, uh, that conflictual argument where you still love your child, but um, I am your mother and you're going to yes. do what I say do. Yeah. From ages, infancy to about 11 or 12. By about 13, they learn how to accommodate their mom by making her think that they are in agreement with her so they don't have to hear the smack. When they step outside of that door, they pick up on the journey and the path to which they're going. Mama then picks it up when she brings a fella home or a or, 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 or girl home. We live in a time and a day now where uh, your greatest dream was for your daughter to marry the right guy that can take care of her and give her all that she needs for her to walk in the door with the right woman that has all of the success that can give her all of that she needs except for a baby, that their lifestyles are not what our lifestyles are, that their paths are not what our paths are, that their journeys is not what our journeys are. And the only thing we've been taught to do is rebuke them and separate ourselves from them to the point that our kids are severed from us by an ideology that doesn't line up with love. Twenty twenty three is my year. Yes. Twenty twenty three is my year. Overseer, you say what? Well, I told the tail end up there to have to take care of some some. From business, but um, last what I heard it was 2023 in my year, so I caught the tail end. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch grab on today. Well, you, well, yeah, but but the, 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 I appreciate and that. Ride it because we we've been waiting for this long time. Amen, amen. Yeah. It, it is, it is. Some great things are gonna happen next year, Bishop, for your for your apostolic ministry and for those that are under you. That's gonna move into their role in ministry it's going to be a great year so everybody is trying to prepare and let's get ready uh it's already started and, 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 and watch it unfold watch it. this is the year of prophetic fulfillment prophetic fulfillment amen wow amen so let's let's let's, let's do the offering and uh and you you had something set up for a prophetic uh, a prophetic uh forecast for today or something like that you said so because uh um brian was like yeah uh uh, I hope I didn't give it away or what, so, you know, I don't know. <laughs> oh, Bishop, you, are you asking me, Bishop? Yeah. Bishop, uh, what I've been praying for and what we did in one of our prophetic um, declarations is pretty much what you have said that so many people, and it's been coming for the past few months, so many people have gone through so much and Overseer King says that all the time, but don't give up. Bishop, we know God is faithful. 
it, if it hasn't manifested as of yet, it's coming. He can't deny himself. You've been saying that, Bishop. And and every time we do the prophetic declaration of prayer as an intercessor, I keep praying for people. And I would say the declaration, do not give up. Do not do not give up. If they would just continue to listen to your voice, things are going to work out, Bishop. Somebody going to be a millionaire. And I was expecting you to say that somebody going to be, Bishop, you said it at the beginning of COVID because of these times. Oh, my goodness, Bishop. I, I, um, I need to go read <laughs> Elder Daniel's books, how to order my thoughts, because Bishop, I know God, he's too complex to be so simple. So he's working, it's always, you'll see, he's working so many things out. Say, 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 say it again, he's too complex to be so simple. Yes. And too simple to be so complex. Well, watch you know, it. That's, that's true. him. That's, that's him. true. He, he, God is a concophony. Mm. And, so, and, and, and so to the complex, he's simple. And to the simple, he's complex. And, and, and in both cases, he's him. Yes. Somebody going to be a millionaire. Yes. Yes. Me. My mama's hollered out me, Bishop. Amen. <laughs> Just That'll be me. <laughs> that will be me. Elder Daniel done unmuted herself because she's speaking that thing. Oh, yes. Would it be inappropriate for me to get up and spin around on camera? Okay. No, 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 no. It, no, no. it wasn't inappropriate because 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 I had I felt my 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 energy going down. So while you was talking, I ate a piece of bread. Ate, whatever. Listen, it's live. It is what it is. Let's stop making it what it's not. It is. It is what it is. Can I say this real quick, Bishop? I'm gonna say again. Whatever projects you got for next year, Bishop, if you want to include me, I, I will jump on board. But but again, in the prophetic declaration I'm writing up for the end of the. I, 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 in prayer, I heard the Lord say, um, um, he's going to bless him, Bishop. I don't know what, out of all you've done this year, Bishop, because of you, if I can say this, because of you, I am the Bishop T.D. Jakes of social work. Because of you, <laughs> people are the, you are are the, are the are, Bishop you. Noah Jones of corporate America. Because of you, Bishop, if I was, I, I have to be careful what I say, but because of some, what you have taught me, I helped a colleague, a friend, triple their six-figure salary, Bishop. My God. From simple principles that you teach us. Um, um, I, I got one offering out of it. I will say that. <laughs> now, now, Brian, go back to what you said. You said because of your T.D. Jakes what? What did you say? I am the T.D. Jakes of social work. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Bishop T.D. Jakes. I was trying to make it the manpower. I was trying to make it the woman died loose. But God just gave me a platform in Wilmington and, and, and North Carolina to, to do what you told me. Knew not to walk away from, not to walk away from. You told me, oh gosh, however many years, over 10 years ago. You said, go sit down, actually. You said, go sit down. <laughs> you said, go sit down. You're in your ministry. That's, a, that's exactly what you said. That's exactly what you said. Go sit down. You are in your ministry. God, you said you are. Ministry. This is your ministry. Don't yes. worry about don't, don't do all that. This is it right here. And yes. that's why, wow. that's why I like Elder Daniels take on it because, uh, God has used her to encourage people to be their marketplace, prophetic, apostle, evangelist, whatever that is, that there's a part of you that works in the marketplace. Maximize it. Maximize it. Maximize it. And, 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 and let me ask you this question. What is shorter than a month, Brian? I would say a week. What is shorter than a week? A day. What is shorter than a day? An hour. What is shorter than an hour? A minute. What is shorter than a minute? A second. What is shorter than a second? A moment. And a moment is longer than any of those things you talked about. Mm. When you come into your moment, Ooh. you can live off of your moment for years. Witchcraft in the Pews was written in 1995. And there's not a day that goes by that somebody doesn't mention that book. It was a moment that was maximized. And I lived off of it for 20 something years. The house I live in is as a result of it. The car I drive is as a result of it. The clothes I wear is as a result of it. The ministries that I build is as a result of it. The other books that I've written is as a result of it. 
I prophesy to everyone who is watching in the name of Jesus. You know, I'm going to give a word of prophecy in two minutes. Y'all talk. I got to ask for something before I give this word of prophecy because I'm not a prophet. So I got to get the right number in, in order to give the prophecy. But I'm going to give you a word in two minutes. King? Bishop preached a long time ago. Uh, if it hadn't come, if it hasn't come, it will come. He did a series on that years and years. And do y'all remember those? Y'all remember those messages? Y'all have been here. How, how long have you been here, uh, Tawanda? About fifteen years. So, do you remember that message Bishop preached? If it hadn't, if it hasn't come, it will come. Yes. It's, I mean, yeah. I mean, he would do series and, and uh, those. I mean, and those times, uh, uh, they're, 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 they're speaking into things that are happening now. And, and the thing, and we couldn't see the things we are now. We had no idea back then that this is what he was talking about. We, that we had no clue. You had no clue. You be the, the, the readers of warfare college and, and uh, Brian, you doing what you're doing. And we had no clue, but God already had it in his mind. And he talked about that. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's amazing how, how the word come brings you full circle. Yeah, he said, there's a word that's spoken over your life. And that word cannot fail. Do you remember that message? Uh, Cynthia, how long have you been in church at, at Bethel? Well, physically, I say about five years, but like I said, it's going back about 10 years now. About 10 years. So Bishop would always preach there's a word that's been that's, uh, that's been spoken. But how there's a word that's spoken over, over your life that cannot fail. And he would say at one time, every time he would get up before he would do anything, he would say there's a word. That's been spoken over your life that cannot fail over and over. There's a word. There's a, he said he said it so much until it would become part of your psyche. You'd be waking up in your sleep. There's a word that's spoken over you. There's a, I mean, it, it just became a part of you until that thing resonated down on the inside so that you know that word that was spoken, it cannot fail. It cannot fail. So this it gave us something to hold on to. It, it was that rock that we held on to through the storm. I mean, through the rain, through the time that we felt like giving up when we didn't see any progression of the word. You understand when God speaks the word and everything around dies. You understand? God speaks life. And then you look, everything dies. <laughs> I mean, just the opposite manifests. And that's, that's, that's the craziest thing. God speaks healing. Next day, you're in the emergency room. God speaks finance. The next day, I got to go to bankruptcy court. God speaks. Your relationship going to be restored. Amen. So talk to us about, you know, some of those words. Talk, some of those words that Bishop spoke down through the years. There's no way that you could have been better and you would not know that some of the things that were said, like the power principles, accusation and criticism, the final stage before spiritual promotion. You could always tell how blessed you're going to be I mean, over and over. I mean, they, I mean, it was just literally faith comes by hearing. So we kept hearing, kept hearing, kept hearing, kept hearing, kept hearing. When nothing was happening, we still kept hearing. When we were going in the opposite direction, we kept hearing. We kept hearing. When it seemed like things was falling, like domino, we still kept hearing. We kept hearing. But after a while, things started turning. <laughs> you understand? It, it, you it know, started turning. It started turning. And so now you know, we're I, living in that season of there's a word that has been spoken over your life. It cannot fail. We're living in that. You Amen. know, you, you you know, uh, I want to say this uh, as we're getting ready to go off the air. Um, I want to say this to uh, to 30 people. Uh, I asked how long is, uh, what's shorter than a month, a week? What's shorter than a week, uh, a day? What's shorter than a day, a, 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 uh, a hour? Uh, what's shorter than an hour, a minute? What's shorter than a minute, a second? What's shorter than a second, a moment? And... Um, I'm talking to 30 persons who are watching tonight that have really just have missed your moment. Just missed your moment. J just, just missed your moment. I want to carry you through a prophetic uh, exercise. And the prophetic exercise is put your money where your thoughts and mm. your mouth is. Put it where it, where, where it is. There's a saying that it takes money to make money. A tip in Europe uh, is the acronym for to assure proper services. 
in the spiritual realm, a tip is to ensure prophetic services, that the things that we speak will come forth. Valerie Morrow dropped that word of 48, and in my spirit, the number 10 dropped, and we went into overflow there. There are 30 persons who are watching as we're going off the air. I want you to ensure a moment for every month starting January 1. I want you to get a $12 seed and I want you to sow it. That's a dollar on every day. Where there is no seed in the ground, there can be absolutely no harvest. I'm talking to you. I, again, am sowing a seed of 12, a dollar on each day, a dollar on each day. You can't get out of Starbucks for less than that. A dollar per day in the name of Jesus. That's the word that I'm forecasting and speaking to you. And again, I want you, when you sow it, I want you to write up under it, done. Done. And we're going to do this in eight minutes. Eight is the number of new beginnings. We're going to be talking while you're sowing, while we're doing this in the name of Jesus. 12, 12, 12, 12 dollars, 30 persons. 30 is the age that Jesus ministry started. 12 is the number of an apostolic number of governance. 12 of you. Start sowing that seed now. Dollar sign general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844 889 1559. Dollar sign general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844 889 1559. Oh my. God. One more time. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Get your seed in the ground. 12, 12, 12. There's someone whose son, whose daughter, whose grandchild that you've been watching is going astray. Let's get a 12 on him. Let's get a 12 on him. In fact, uh, King, sow a 12 on Justin Jaren. Justin Jaren, Bree, the little one, Zoe, uh, China, uh, um, uh, and Jari's two kids. So that's seven, eight, eight times 12. I want you to get it and sow it right now in the name of Jesus on my behalf, on my grandchildren in the name of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Every attempt and attack that the enemy brings, he continues to bring it to our minds. Don't disconnect yourself from the voice that God connected you to just because you get frustrated. Don't have a, an adult temper tantrum, kicking up, slamming things and knocking things down. I want to get the bishop, I can't get the bishop, so my season is up. This season is not up. The season is not up. I want you to know I'll be here when you get back. And if you never come back, I'll be here. And I'll never blast you. I'll never talk about you. I just need you covered under what God has anointed me to do in the name of Jesus. China, my other grandson, I forget his name. Uh, um, uh, Jari's two boys. Jessica's three. And Jennifer's one. 
12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. We're sowing that in the name of Jesus. Morrow, you have set me up for this family piece here. Good. We I'm telling you, I feel it. I, 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 I really... I really, really feel it's going to be a family thing. We're going to be in the room and family's going to be sitting in sections with each other. And we're going I'm to go excited. at it. We're going to go at it. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a great, great time in yes. the Lord. Dollar sign, general of warfare, 12. You're sowing for my grandchildren. Dollar sign, general of warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844 889 1559. Oh, the devil is a liar and a deceiver too, but God is not through blessing you. Uh, Elijah Goodwin, I think, wrote that. Mm -hmm. The devil is a liar and a deceiver to but god is not through blessing you elijah 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 goodwin wrote that he's the lily of the valley the bright and morning star the fairest of ten thousand more precious than silver or gold bread to the hungry Water your thirst no more. Heal is everything I need. Everything I need. Jesus, you're everything. Oh, Jesus, you're everything. Oh, Jesus, you're everything to me. I wrote that song. Those songs was written not with pen on a piece of paper but sitting in the presence of the Lord. I need the Holy Ghost, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost, fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I will worship, I'll worship thee. It, the, the songs that just, dropped into your spirit no more now if you don't record them and 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 and, and put music to them you'll forget them because they ain't coming back you may have said it in an early morning service but in the evening service it, 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 it doesn't come back i'm waiting for you to do what i know god has called you to do 30 persons are sowing that seed of 12 you're sowing it for loved ones you're sowing it for family members you're selling it for cranky individuals on your job you're sowing it for <laughs> cantankerous persons you're sowing it for a person that you've been holding a grudge against you're sowing it as a seed of release. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. All right, we're going off the air today. Thank you so much for reminding me in these closing days of the year how important I've been to you guys in your life because you've certainly been equally that important to me and in my life. And when COVID hit, when COVID hit, it was just me, my staff, and my readers. That's all I had. I didn't see the other members. I couldn't see them. I did. They were they 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 they, they weren't there. And COVID has done a tsunami on churches. He's come in in an El Nino and wiped churches out. For us to be standing on Sunday mornings, social distancing, yes, but three quarters to full on Sunday mornings is just a marvelous miracle. And to see what God did in the conclave and then again for the consecration service, two different crowds, to have that many people go through the building in a three-year period of time was miraculous. And only we know what God is going to do. But New Year's Eve is our next service. We'll be distancing a little bit, but we're coming in there for two hours, a live simulcast. And the theme is saved 
by the bell. Saved by the bell. Our preachers are going to be preaching in a marathon, hitting the bell and going, hitting the bell and going, hitting the bell and going. It's a miraculous thing. Uh, 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 Morrow, this Sunday morning, we had the opportunity to minister to uh, Kevin and his wife. I heard. And I can't even begin to tell you how on point that was because his wife and I, Shirley, had the conversation the week before, two, uh, about four or five days before. And I told her that God would speak to her, she and her husband without a shadow of a doubt. And then Sunday, and I wasn't there, but Sunday she called me and said, Val, God spoke. <laughs> Changed her life. I reminded her that you told her that her healing hey. was in her dance. And she said, Val, ever since I stopped dancing, I've been sick. I've been falling. I can't. My life is falling. I'm so thankful that Bishop spoke this word into our life again. Uh, Carmen's wife name is? Renee. Renee. Uh, Renee in retirement is holding a ministry structure that we're going to see in fulfillment in 2023 in our church. That gift is going to come it's, forth. Oh my goodness. And it's going to bless the people of God. Woo! Under this administration, I told you I feel prophecy. <laughs> uh, under this administration, that anointing as a, a, a pastor of education that was on Wilma Yellick. Yes. People leave, but that anointing stays in the earth. Yes. That anointing is your anointing for me in my Amen. house, amongst my people. Amen. That anointing is there. And we, we'll, we'll have to carve, we'll have to shape, we'll have yes. to mold. All that has to happen. Adelia said it best. It's a process. But this is that season. This is that area. This is that time of process. Amen. I feel so safe with uh, with Tawana and, uh, and 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 Tolls and and I own and those readers and Evelyn. Evelyn. I feel uh, undergirding by these women, and I know that the ministry that is about to come out of you is going to be unbelievable. Amen. And I've never had a day like I've been having the past two years. Where I just sit back and I know that any one of my sons and daughters, I can say to them, go and, and uh, preach this or do this. And they just like that. It's amazing what, what, what was coming out of you guys and that you listen and you hear. And that's all Amen. we've ever wanted from God. Amen. We're going to the top of our game in the name Amen. of Jesus. Dollar sign, general of warfare. 30 of you are sowing the seed of $12. Dollar sign, general of warf warfare. W warfare. I almost said general of welfare. The devil is alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a general of that too. General of warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Our time is up today. I'm not going to ask you for final words that will take us too far out uh, yonder. Uh, remember Friday night, we close the week with prayer. Saturday, we open up the week with prayer. This year, I'm waiting for God to give me the instructions, but I know we're going into a 12-day consecration and the prayer time will be two. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Okay? All right? That's the prayer access code. Uh, uh, join in on our prayer. All right? Uh, during our 12-day consecration, we'll be in prayer at 6 a.m. in the morning and at 8 o'clock in the evening for 12 days. For 12 days. And then... One sun, one Monday, one day out of each week, the first Monday after the first Sunday, we will visit the day that we prayed and interceded for, for one day, for that whole month, we'll interview that we'll, we'll come and visit that day for one day, like we did last year. And that's God speaking that very, very strongly in the name of Jesus. Uh, remember, we're celebrating the King's birthday on Sunday immediately after church, uh, come with your third pocket with something green 
and foldable. Foldable. Okay, man. Green, you can fold. Foldable. Okay, put that on the shirt too. In the name of Jesus. Love you guys very, very much. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Thank you so much, Overseer. Thank you, uh, our panel today. Love you very, very much. The paint on our door is blood. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Exodus 12 verses 12 through 13. That's the covenant of protection. The instructions are. Come, my people, go home and shut yourselves in. Go into seclusion for a while until the punishing wrath is past, because God is sure to come from his place to punish the wrong of the people on earth. Earth itself will point out the bloodstains. It will show where the murdered have been hidden away. Isaiah 26, verses 20 and 21 in the message. Go home, shut yourselves in, sanctify yourself, sanitize your home, love your children, sow a seed, and worship God. See you tomorrow, uh, Monday. Wow, end of the week already on Warfare Ecology. Look forward to seeing you on the prayer line tomorrow.